Terry Melisi, and welcome back to The Gathering. Tonight's dinner is titled, An Italian Dinner for an Italian Brother. My brother Joey is the youngest of four children, and there are ten years between him and my other brother, and I'm 13 years older than Joey. So, as most youngest children are, he was definitely the mascot of the family, providing us with never-ending entertainment. So I thought it would be a great idea to entertain him this evening with a dinner party for him. And on tonight's menu, we're going to be having for appetizers asparagus wrapped in prosciutto, sun-dried tomato asparagus buttons, and lamb chop lekka lekkas, which translates into lamb chop lollipops, and then we'll have an antipasto, followed by cioppino, and we're going to end the dinner with tiramisu, an all-time favorite. So, let's get going. We're going to start with the tiramisu. Now here I have two tablespoons of strong coffee cold, two tablespoons of coffee extract, two tablespoons of amaretto, six tablespoons of sugar, four egg yolks, a cup and a half of mascarpone cheese, two teaspoons of lemon juice, I have one cup of heavy cream, one tablespoon of milk, two tablespoons of unsweetened cocoa, and one tablespoon of confectioner's sugar. And here I have many lady fingers, and it all depends on what serving size bowl you're going to be serving it in. Uh, we'll determine how many lady fingers you'll, you'll need. So, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to line the bowl with the lady fingers. One layer. And tiramisu means pick me up. And after a nice Italian meal, that's probably what you're going to need. So you just want to layer them in here and make sure there's a nice covering in the bowl. And they smell really sweet. Okay, that looks about good. Now we're going to take our coffee and our coffee extract and our amaretto and mix those together. And then we're going to sprinkle half of it over the lady fingers. And next, I'm going to take my sugar, put it in a heat proof dish, sprinkle that in. Then I'm going to take my egg yolks, Just going to mix that up a little bit till it all gets incorporated. And then what we're going to do is put it over a pan of water that's simmering. Now it's very important that you do not boil the water because the boiled water will cook the eggs and we don't want to do that. So this is nice and I'm going to put this on <coughs> what we're going to do is we're going to whisk this until it gets thick and it leaves a nice little trail 
when you lift the whisk up? Oh, maybe a couple of minutes. Now I'm testing the height. I'm going to take a few drops of vanilla and incorporate that into the egg yolk mixture. Now, we're going to take our mascarpone cheese and combine it with the lemon juice. We're going to mix it. Okay, so, in goes the mascarpone cheese. And it's like, if you've never worked with mascarpone cheese, it's like, very, very, very thick whipped cream. Take the lemon juice, pour that in. I'm going to mix that up. While that's going, we're going to take our egg mixture and add that as well. Now you can see how pliable this is. What we're going to do is take our mixture and this just looks beautiful. You can see that. And we are going to take half this mixture and pour it over our lady fingers. That's pretty good. We'll let that sit for a while. And then we're going to take the rest of our lady fingers and make another layer. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then we're going to take the rest of our mascarpone and egg mixture and again, drizzle it over the lady fingers. Put this back on. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take our heavy cream And we're going to mix it with our milk. And we'll beat this until it's nice and fluffy. And that is beautiful. As you can see, it is just, just beautiful. Nice, light, and fluffy. And you want to pour this over the whole dessert. And now what we're going to do, we're going to take our cocoa and we're going to sprinkle it over the top. And then we'll take our confectioner's sugar Sprinkle that on the top. And here you have it, tiramisu. This needs to sit in the fridge for at least two hours. And now it's on to asparagus wrapped in prosciutto. 
So, as you can see here, we have an assembly line. We have our asparagus, and I have 28 spears, which I blanched in boiling water for two minutes to keep their color and to keep them crisp. I have a half a cup of butter melted. I have Parmesan cheese. And lastly, I have 14 slices of prosciutto, and prosciutto is um, cured dried ham. And I cut them in half so I have 28 pieces. So what we're going to do is we're going to take an asparagus, we're going to dip it in the butter, and we're going to dip it in the asparagus, and then we're going to take one slice, and it's, it's very delicate, it's hard to work with, so you have to be careful. And just gently wrap it around the asparagus, and we'll put it on what I'm going to bake it in. And this will bake in a 350 oven for maybe five minutes or so. So here they are, asparagus rolled in prosciutto. What I did was I took the leftover Parmesan cheese and just sprinkled it over the top. Now I'll put these aside so I can bake them right before my guests come. And again, they'll go into a 350 oven for five to seven minutes. So there you have it. And now it's on to our lamb chop leka lekas. And why I decided to have these is because although we're going to have some form of meat with the antipasto, the cioppino is all fish. So I thought this would be a nice little addition. So here we have two racks of lamb. And what I did was I cut them already into little riblets. And I marinated them overnight in a balsamic vinaigrette. And basically that's all there is to it. And what I'm going to do right before my guests arrive is broil them. And you can broil them for however long you want to. It you know, depends on your desired doneness. And this should be a nice complement to the asparagus rolled in prosciutto. And the appetizer that's coming up next, sun-dried tomato artichoke buttons. And these smell wonderful. Absolutely. And there you have them. Lamb chops, leka leka. Now it's on to our sun-dried tomato artichoke buttons. And of course here we have another assembly line. And I have 20 artichoke bottoms. And what you want to do is rinse them and soak them in lemon juice for five minutes. Then rinse them, pat them dry, and then slice off the bottom so that they sit in a pan. And then you want to take a few sun-dried tomatoes, put them in there, and then you can take a piece of mozzarella and just kind of squeeze it so that it will sit on top and then you take a little bit of pesto and top that. So I'm going to go ahead and make these up. This is another interesting appetizer that you don't see too often, most definitely. And here you have it, yet another easy appetizer. So these will go in the oven at 250 for five minutes. 
And now it's on to our main course, Chipino. And I'll be serving this with a roasted garlic sliced baguette. So what we have here is two pounds of Alaskan king crab, two pounds of little necks, two pounds of sea scallops, two pounds of large shrimp, two pounds of haddock, two 28 ounce cans of diced tomatoes with their juice. I have four cups of red wine. I'm using a Merlot. Two large green peppers chopped. Two onions chopped. I have two cups of water here and one 12 ounce can of tomato paste. And I have a half a cup of fresh chopped parsley. I have two tablespoons of chopped garlic. I have a half a cup of olive oil, one teaspoon of dried basil, and one teaspoon of rosemary. And what we're going to do is I am going to heat up the oil in a pan and saute the garlic and the onions and the peppers until they're soft and then I'm going to add everything else except the fish. I'll let it cook for a half an hour on a low heat and then I'll add the fish. So, um, we'll get to that and I'll see you at the stove. Now I've added my oil and it is ready. So I'm going to add my garlic. Turn down the heat just a bit. I'll add my onions. I'm going to saute these until they're soft. I'm also going to add my peppers. And we're going to let this cook for a half an hour. While that's cooking, I'm going to start the antipasto. And now it's on to the antipasto. Now, you can really put in whatever you like, but for this antipasto, I have romaine lettuce, cherry tomatoes, mortadella, Genoa salami, provolone cheese, white tuna, anchovies, and I have kalamata olives, roasted red peppers, Sicilian green olives, marinated artichoke hearts, and pepperoncini. So, again, it's how you really want to put this together. There's no set way for it, which is the beauty of this. I am going to plop in cherry tomatoes. And again, you can design this dish any way you like. I like to roll up the meat. Makes for a nice presentation. I'm 
and it's easier to grab a serving. I think I'll put the salami opposite. That's looking pretty good. Now I will lay the red peppers right off to the side. And then I think for some contrast, black olives right over here. And now we'll do the Sicilian olives over here. Take the tuna and actually put the tuna right here, which is the last spot for it. And I think what I'll do is keep the anchovies off to the side. So there it is, our antipasto. I think it's time to throw the fish into the cioppino, and then I'll be getting ready for my guests. Now, as you can see, this is coming out really nice. It's rendering down. The vegetables are nice and cooked and it smells wonderful. So I think it's time we're going to add our seafood. We'll put the shrimp in. Give that a good stir. put the scallops in. And then we'll put the haddock in. Now I left the haddock whole because when we go to stir it on occasion, it'll break up. And you don't want it to break up too small. So we'll leave that whole. And already you can see the shrimps are starting to cook. Of course it doesn't take long. Now I did want to show you what I did with the crab. Every piece I took a very sharp knife and cut through the shell so that not only will the sauce and broth get into the fish, it'll be easier for my guests to get the meat out. So, we're going to throw these in there. Stir that up a bit. You want to make sure that all the seafood is covered in the broth so that not only the seafood gets flavored, but that the seafood flavors the broth. And then I'm going to place my little necks in and I can hear them
opening their shells, closing their shells. Hear that? <laughs> and for those of you out there that aren't aware of this, when you're cooking clams or any shellfish, mussels, whatever, in their shells, if at the end of cooking the shells don't open, discard them because that means the fish is dead. This is really looking nice, as you can see. So, I'm going to put this back on the heat, put it on low, and this can cook now and simmer until the party. So now what I'm going to do is set my table and get ready for my guests. See you soon. And this is the table before the party. And yet, oh, oven's ready. And yet, another view of the table before the guests arrive. A brighter view. I'll say, hi, welcome to the gathering. This is my brother, Joey. You know, the one I told you about, the mascot of the family. <laughs> and these are his friends, John and Tracy. Hello. Hello. So, here we go, and um, we're glad you joined us for the gathering. Here's to HCAM TV.